it in this other research agenda that I have, the dynamics of pro-social behavior. So what I mean is that it's important to understand how people make moral choices over time. So a lot of the experiments and field, the field studies that are being done are very much one shot. So I'm, I'm doing a, some sort of manipulation and I'm seeing that, for example, matching a donation increases the amount of money that people put in. Great, so this is very effective, but in, in a one shot set, if I ask, for example, a week, a year, two days from then, for a second donation, how is that affected by the treatment? Let's say people are now giving more money. That given the treatment, they're giving not $5, but $20. And that makes me infer that this treatment is effective in uh, uh, creating a greater uh, donation pool and getting greater revenue for my firm. But let's say if I ask them a week from then, all of a sudden they were giving $5, and now they're giving zero. So the dynamics is that how does the, the original moral choice, how does the, how does the original pro-social behavior affect subsequent uh, moral behavior? So this is actually a large uh, literature in, this, in psychology. And basically, the argument in that literature is whether moral licensing or moral consistency dominate. So barring any sort of income effect, barring an individual having some sort of budget, Psychologists are interested in finding out whether uh, an original pro-social choice makes the subsequent pro-social choice less likely or more likely, or does it not change at all? So there's robust evidence for both effects. More licensing says, look, I just did something good, I've done my good deed for the day, now I'm licensed to steal, I'm lic more licensed to give less, things like that, that's moral licensing. Moral consistency says that Look, I did something good, I'm a good person, I'm feeling great, I'm gonna keep doing that good thing. I'm more likely to do something good after the original moral choice. And both effects have been found in the literature, both are robust, so the challenge is to f find out which one dominates in real world situations. So in this uh, research plan, uh, we started out with some lab evidence and then ran a large lab uh, field study in Disney to find out uh, what effect would dominate. So, Kind of the, the reason we, let, we ran the lab uh, in, in the first place is because in the field it was going to be very, very difficult to separate causation from some sort of correlation. And as I'll show you from the field evidence, it's still difficult uh, to, uh, to tease those apart. But in the lab, we were actually able to say, look, this is the motivator for licensing. This is the motivator for consistency. And hence, when we designed this field experiment, this is what we expect to see, and indeed, that is what we saw. So in, this, in the lab, we, uh, we had two choices. The first choice was um, a um, cost of initial, pro, was a pro-social behavior, was individuals were told, look, uh, at the end of the experiment, you're gonna donate to a charitable uh, organization. $2 will either be taken out of your final payment, or two dollars will be donated to this charitable organization on your behalf, but it's going to be independent of your final compensation. So this is a costless donation, or there's no donation option. Afterwards, individuals chose whether to lie or tell the truth to another individual. So they played this thing called the sender-receiver game. It's basically individuals were paired up, and one individual was, uh, was going to lie or tell the truth to the other individual at uh, cost to, to him and a benefit to the sender. So the, our dependent variable was the level of deception given the treatment, whether the original pro-social uh, behavior was costly or costless. The reason we decided to manipulate cost is because we, after doing a lit review, all of the studies that found licensing, the original pro-social choice was costless. So it was saying I'm gonna do something good or recalling a good event that you and all of the literature that found consistency was the opposite. It was costly. The individual actually had to spend time and money on the original uh, cost of choice. So here's what we found in terms of uh, deception. And in line with, with our prediction, when the original donation, when the original pro-social choice was costly, you found more people telling the truth than the control. However, if it was costless, we found the exact opposite. We found less people telling the truth than the control. So we found consistency effect, we found a licensing effect, but we found that this was very dependent on the type of pro-social behavior you did in the first stage. 
So in the field, uh, a large amusement park named Disney <laughs> agreed to work with us. Um, and the setup was a photo after you uh, go down a, a roller coaster. So you guys probably all know, you go down this roller coaster, somebody takes a photo of you, then they all get uh, printed out, they put on a wall, and then you get charged something like $14 if you want to buy it. <laughs> and a lot of people stand there with a cell phone, they just take a picture of the photo, and then they walk away. <laughs> Um, and then afterwards, every, in this particular ride, the reason that we chose it is because afterwards everybody went to a store. And then we had people, at the end of the store, uh, they asked them, it conditional on purchasing something in the store, whether this was for them or whether this was for somebody else. So uh, the, the manipulation was the original photo that you could purchase was either half of the money that you, that you spent either went to charity or all of the money went to Disney. So the pro-social condition is that you bought a photo and half of the money went to charity. In the other treatment, uh, money didn't go to charity. It was just a fixed price. Same price, $12.95 in each case. So the de dependent, and the dependent variable was the fraction of people buying additional merchandise for others relative to themselves. And here's the data. So you can divide the data by buyers and non-buyers, and what you see right away is this very strong consistency of that you spent $12.95 on this photo, it came out of your wallet, half of it went to charity, and all of a sudden now you were more likely to buy a gift for somebody else rather than yourself relative to everybody else in the data set. So the last thing that I'll present, and this is from a separate paper, and this is something that we were really interested in, now, in, especially in the United States, I don't know how it is in Britain, at the checkout counter, Everywhere you go, you can seemingly donate one dollar to charity, two dollars. Everybody's asking you for a donation, almost regardless of what you do. You buy an airplane ticket at the end, do you want to uh, donate to save uh, a rainforest? How much do you want to donate? So there's tons of pro-social opportunities all over the place. So we wanted to know whether this ability to donate, knowing that you're able to donate, does that affect the likelihood of you doing something unethical? Knowing that you can offset the unethical behavior by donating in the future, does that affect your propensity to engage in that behavior? So that's a weird graph. Um, so what we did was, uh, so what we did was, um, we have the center receiver game, you have a decision to lie or tell the truth, and then in one case we told them, look, after you tell the truth, you can donate a small percentage of your earnings to a charity. In the other case, we didn't tell them anything. So what we found is that when individuals learned that they could uh, donate a small fraction of their payment to a charity, they lied 63% of the time, which was significantly larger than the baseline and uh, the informed bundle, which can bundle the two decisions in the same, in the same decision. So you had under 50% of people lying when there was no charitable, uh, charitable option, but when they knew that they could offset it by donating to charity, they lied a lot more. So, uh, kind of the takeaway from that uh, very brief, very quick uh, overview is that paying attention to the order, to the timing of pro-social opportunities is important for, uh, for studying uh, decision-making in a pro-social domain. So knowing that you will be able to offset some, something bad that you're doing will affect the pro your probability of doing uh, that bad thing. You're more likely to lie. We found in other experiments you're more likely to steal from the Experimenter, if you knew that you know that you can offset it by donating a small uh, small amount. So this seems to be a robust effect, and it's something that uh, charitable organizations and 